Good morning, friends. Actually, I have no idea if it's morning for you. It's morning for me, so I'm saying good morning, friends. Welcome to another episode of The Daily Creative. I'm Chase, and this is the show where I answer your questions on your journey to begin... Uh, what? <laughs> to be an aspiring or professional creative. Casey's over there just playing with technology. Does that mean you have a, a call queued up? Because now we're like 10 seconds later than I wanted to be to get in the show. For sure. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to bring the mic over here today. Okay. Go ahead, Casey. I'm going to stay seated the entire show. I'm going to do my best. Go. Hey Chase, I always uh, this is my uh, Nihilus or Nick from Germany. I'm at Nihilus Official on Twitter or Instagram. And my question is, how do you seem professional without seeming big-headed? Because it's like a big problem for creatives in Germany because everybody thinks you're conceited or you're just proud of yourself and arrogant. And I would like to know your opinion on it. All right. So um, I couldn't hear his name. Can you say that? Oh, is anonymous? Indistinguishable? Intentionally anonymous? Kind of hard to tell. Okay, maybe he said his name. It was a little muffled there at the beginning. Um, good sir from Germany, thank you for calling in. Uh, the, the, to distill your question, I think it's basically how do you be professional and not arrogant? I don't think professionalism and arrogant are on the same scale at all. You can be non-professional and arrogant, or you can be non-professional and arrogant, and the same is true for the professional side. Um, so those two things, and there might be a cultural distinction here, honestly, like in Germany, if you say you're a professional something, um, maybe that has to do, in a lot of other cultures, for example, in France, you actually have to have sort of a license to be a photographer. You have to be certified, like, um, so I, I don't know the culture there in Germany, although I love it, and I'm going to be there in, on Wednesday, so if you want to hang out and get a beer, um, just call me, my number's, no, I'm just kidding, um, but... I think embedded in your question is another sort of interesting sub-question because I'm not going to go there with respect to the cultural stuff, but it is imp confidence and arrogance. Let's, let's talk about that for a little bit. I think being confident that you can do a great job, confident that you can deliver more than what the client's asking for in any line of work is a massive, massive advantage. Um, now, false confidence uh, would be arrogance. That means you don't know if you can actually deliver what you say you're going to deliver. And that begs the question, well, how then do I know if I'm going to be able to do the work or not? And that, my friend, is repetition. That is the 10,000 hours. That is the, even if you shortcut it and you hack the system and you do the Tim Ferriss thing and do the 80-20 Pareto rule, you still have to do something over and over and over until you have it mastered. Mastery is one of the things that our culture um, rewards with, uh, generally, with uh, those are the people who, um, there's, in many cases, it's a meritocracy. It's very hard to fool people now to suck because information moves so quickly to suck and not get discovered that you suck. So if you truly have done the work to master something, whether that's design, photography, filmmaking, building businesses, any of the things that we talk about here on the show, that should give you confidence. And confidence is something that actually clients want. And they don't, they don't want cockiness, they don't want arrogance, but they want confidence. You can say you've done this before. That's one of the things when they're, I know in high profile campaigns, I've won a lot of those because I've been able to say, oh, you want me, you know, maybe it's, it's uh, Adidas and, and they wanna, oh, I wanna shoot a shoe in this particular way, in this location, in the desert, in the, and I'm like, oh, I've done something really similar before, or here are two projects that I've done that can combine it. So through that experience, you get confidence through confidence the people who are going to write you a big check, they want you to be confident. If you're not confident, no big check. If you walk in like, ah, geez, I don't know. Because if, if you, what, in whatever genre, if you're going to build me a house and, uh, and you, I say, oh, cool, you're gonna, you know, is this something you can build? And you say, yeah, I, I think so. Like, what? I'm going to spend, you know, fill in the blank, $500,000, a million dollars building a house. You don't just go with the person that thinks they might be able to do it. So, I would encourage you to, through repetition and being great at your craft, develop confidence, do a lot of work, and that confidence is something that is sellable. That is in part what people are buying. Now, I'll give you one other thing, which is my friend Debbie Millman, amazing designer. She creates a nice distinction between confidence and courage. Because before you have confidence, what you need is courage. You get confidence through repetition, as I just said, and, and it's courage at the beginning, the willingness to fail and learn, 
that is over time how you gain confidence. So again, it's a little bit of a tweak because I'm not going all in on your question because I don't know the, cult, the culture in Germany, but originally, again, they're, they're on different spec spectrums, professional and arrogant. I think you should at first have courage to try things and get good at them and fail, get good, fail, fail, get good, and then be better and then have confidence. And when you have confidence, lean into that. That is one of the things that's gonna help you be different and better than someone else that's gonna help you get hired. So confidence is important. It's not everything. And even if you are confident or you, you, you got most of the style and there's 10% of the thing you don't know, that's, I think, that courage part. If you can maintain that, um, uh, you know, in, in look at that's the part where you're still in self discovery, and for most people, that's like 99% of the people, um, myself included. I've been asked to do some crazy shit. I could say, well, I've never flown a helicopter over a yacht in Antarctica, you know, verging on winter. I don't know if all those things are possible, so I might have to like go out on a limb and say, I think, and that's when you're just quantifying or quantifying and or qualifying the risks for the client, but. If you've built, you've done so many things on the periphery that you are the most qualified person in the world, maybe you're asking for something that's never been done before, that is a reward for all your hard work. So you should celebrate that. Um, I think that's a good answer. I really do. Take that to heart. I wish I understood the cultural nuance there in Germany, um, which I think you might be getting at. But I think that there's enough to gain from what I just talked about. You should really go back and watch my, uh, my interview with Debbie Millman. I'm going to write that in the board real quick here. Hold tight. So that was Debbie Millman. M I L. Is there two L's and one N? I think that's what it is. Um, she's got a she's got an amazing class on Creative Live also called um, Brand Called You. Brand called. Is that right? Is that yeah. Brand Called You? Mm -hmm. And what you want to know, you all, you definitely want to watch the CJ Live episode with her, where she makes that distinguishing the. She distinguishes between, um, did I just stick it? I did. You see that chalk over the shoulder? There you go. That, that's, that's called confidence. Um, it's, it's an amazing episode, the distinction between courage and confidence. So, all right, that was good. I like that. Anonymous, I wish we had your name if we did, if you said it and we couldn't understand it, I'm sorry. But that is not a, uh, I hope you feel confident in this community. Like, you're safe here. You can, next time you call in, feel free to leave your, not obligated, it's fine, but I want you to feel safe. Casey, give me another question if you would, my fan, my man, my fan, my fan, man, man, sorry. Hey Chase, Hi. what's up? First Hello. off, big thanks for doing a show like this. My name's Bryce Mullen, same Bryce. thing on Instagram, and I've been following your stuff for probably five years at this point, and I've loved it every step of the way. My challenge is, what are some good ways or strategies to approach a commercial client you want to shoot for that you have no connections or contacts with? could be as big as Nike or as small as a local business. I know there's probably not one definitive way. I'd just love to hear your thoughts on what's worked for you or what you'd recommend. Mm. Thanks again. See you later. All right. So as far as just cold calling someone, like in the classic sense of literally cold calling them, like, hi, I'm, I'm um, Bryce. Was that his name? I'm Bryce, and I'm a photographer. I want to shoot for you. Don't. Don't just call people. What I would do, rather, is build a case over time. Like This is a, is a little more richness to this question than I originally thought I was going to get, so I'm going to go deeper than I told my, my crew here. Um, you need to understand how this company spends money. What, are they, what service do you provide, whether you're a designer, a photographer, whatever, where do they spend that money? Do they have agencies that are agencies of record? Do they have photographers that they work with? How can you deconstruct the materials that you see out in the world that they're already doing? And then how can you insert yourself in that discussion? Maybe they have a job fair where they're looking for you know new people in the area of expertise that you're in. So go there, be present. You have to participate. This is in some ways the other 50%, that video that, um, yeah, that's, uh, I'm gonna put that on the board too. The other 50%. Other fifty percent. This the other fifty percent is things that are beyond your craft, and that is marketing yourself. And that's what the question you're asking about. People think that if you just do a bunch of good work, that the work's going to uh, pour into you. And the reality is, it's not true. You have to promote yourself. So, um, 
you know, specifically to your question, how do you get in front of clients that you that don't know you exist? You have to find a way to get there. Find out who buys what for them, where, um, what times of year do they ship? Do they ship catalogs? Who are their photographers? Uh, who are their designers or whatever line of work? Does he say what line of work he's in? Just he did say commercial photography. Okay, so. Um, presumably they have art directors, they have creative directors, they review portfolios. How can you follow them on Instagram? Like everything that they do, share, like when it makes sense, don't stalk and be weird, but how can you comment on their work and how can you put your work in front of them in a digital sphere that's not creepy? Um, when you see things, see images that they put out in social, do you have something that's as good or better? And can you tag them? I love the photo that you, you know, I love the Instagram shot you did. Here's another one that, you know, that I did that was similar. And if it's way better than the people that are driving social, you know, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. And they may reach out to the ad agency or to the art director or whoever is internal. Um, a lot of these things also happen through agencies. So if there's a company you want to work for, um, they probably have an agency. Find out how their agency of record is. You can do this on the internet. Find out who the people on the account are and get your portfolio in front of them. Get your shit together. Make a body of work that is something that's as good as or better than the stuff that you see out there and then bring that into that ad agency. Get an appointment there. Make them part of your mailing list. I also, I, I do love the one-to-one -one marketing. Instead of just creating generic marketing vehicles and then put them everywhere, I love, especially in today's world, doing unscalable shit. Now, my phone rings this way, but until you are getting all this inbound, you have to do this. And what I would do is I'd find out who are the f like 600 people or maybe there's 80 people that you want to work with. And I would customize. This sounds like a pain in the ass. And of course, there's some baseline thing that is not something that's changing. You don't build everything from scratch. But what is a thing that you can do to customize the experience for the person? This is when you figure out who is who are the people that are writing checks to you know to to uh, as in support of the brand that you want to get hired to be like or not to be like hired to work for. So, um, a you know go back to the top of the hour summary. If it's just don't call cold call someone, especially if you're a photographer, that's weird. Do you want to get a, a meeting? Yes, but create a great body of work and then go through the proper channels of reaching out to the people via email and say, I'd love to show my portfolio to you. Um, what's the best way? The tracking them down on social and putting work in front of them in an honest, authentic, simple, non-stocky, weirdo way, and then trying to market to them. And ultimately, are they speaking at a conference nearby? Can you attend them and walk up to stage and meet them? You do need to find a way to get FaceTime. Cold calling as in literally dialing them and say, hi, Sally, it's Chase. I don't, you don't know me from Adam, but I, I don't actually love that. So um, there you go. That's the answer. And that was Bryce, right? Bryce, good answer. Um, do we have time for one more? Maybe? No? We're pretty much, oh, we're at 1240. That was a long episode. Thank you very much for calling in. I'm Chase. This is the show where I answer your questions. If you want your question to appear on this show, dial 802-962-4357. And if you're international, just put a plus one there. And dear God, subscribe. That is, you know, we're, we're without a doubt, unabashedly, I'm trying to grow this profile of the show and this channel, these channels, wherever you're consuming this, such that more people can be positively impacted from the years and years that I've been doing this and the experience that I've gathered from my friends. I got a lot of stories about all the problems, not all of them, I'll take that back. Most of the problems that you've experienced, I've seen them in my career and I want to share them with you. So help me grow the channel. Thanks so much for your time. Subscribe, comment. I love you. And I'll see you tomorrow.